Hey everybody, Larry here. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about some design changes that I've made to the flip dot display. I'm going to be working my way up to this small four dot display that you see here. One thing you can notice is that the magnet has gotten much smaller and we've changed the design of the electromagnets a little bit. As I was messing around with this array, installing multiple dots with these larger magnets, I quickly noticed that by flipping one dot, it would oftentimes cause the dot next to it to flip as well. So let's take a closer look at these magnets and try a few different options. So here are the original magnets that I purchased for this flip dot. They're pretty big and uh, the flip dot flips pretty quickly uh, when I use these. However, if you try to push them close to each other, you can see that they start influencing one another uh, at a pretty far distance. I'm thinking that this would mean that in order to prevent a, an adjacent dot from f interfering with the other, or with its uh, next neighbor, it would have to be positioned about this far away, which is pretty far. In a grid like this, let's see if these magnets will interfere with each other. Here we can see in this orientation that if I flip this magnet, or this dot rather, that the other one moves with it. Let's flip the polarity around and see what that looks like. So now when I flip it, they both face the same way. So this is pretty counterproductive uh, considering we want to be able to individually flip uh, a dot independent of its neighbors. So why don't we look at some smaller magnets? Here I have two 3 8 inch diameter neodymium magnets. And if I push this one close to the next one, you can see that they can get a lot closer to each other than those larger ones. So that means dots theoretically should be able to be pushed closer together without them interfering. So let's swap out these larger dots for these smaller ones to see if they're still in effect. I have four of these smaller magnets mounted up in some dots, um, and when I try to flip them, you can see that they're still interfering with each other um, quite substantially. Uh, so I think uh, we're still on the hunt for a solution to how to solve this design issue. Since I've tried a few different magnet solutions, instead of trying to iterate more on the different size magnet, I figure I would revisit the, uh, the base. My first thought is to move the location of the electromagnets out of this corner and instead of having these posts, just use the nail or the extended part of the electromagnet core as the post that the flip dot uses to arrest its rotation. Not only am I going to change the location of the electromagnet core pins, I'm also going to update the dot design. I'm going to move the magnet from the center and put it out here, denoted by this little bit of uh, black sharpie. My hope is that I can use a smaller magnet, which will reduce the chance that it'll interfere with the dot next to it. And also, the magnet will now come in contact with the core of the electromagnet, which I'm hoping will mean the dot will stay in place even when it's positioned vertically rather than horizontally. Earlier, while trying to assemble one of these magnets into the flip dot, I accidentally cracked it in half. However, now that I'm making this design change, I think I'm gonna be able to reuse this broken magnet. I'm gonna take one of these fragments and attach it to the edge of one of these flip dots and test out this new idea. We're also gonna need a new base. I've 3D printed this test piece here with some slots cut in the sides. These are gonna be where I'm gonna slide in some M3 shaft that's gonna act as our new electromagnet core. Now it's time to test out our new design. I've put together here a H-bridge circuit, which will allow me to control the direction of current running through these electromagnets. So here if I activate one side, we can see that we get a flip. 
And if I have to activate the other side, we get to flip back. I'm pretty happy with this design. I think it's worth it to step it up to a larger array like this one and see if we got rid of that crosstalk between the dots. I 3D printed up a 2 by 2 matrix and uh, wound some electromagnets uh, with our new posts. The magnets now appear in the corner and I purchased some small 4 millimeter by 1 millimeter neodymium magnets uh, to help us uh, with this new design. So let's get these installed and uh, see how it works. I got the flip dot installed into the smaller 2x2 array here with our new magnet. Before I start testing it, I want to upgrade the H-bridge circuit. What I want to do is I want to put a couple buttons here to short the size of the H-bridge so that I don't have to pick these pins out and uh, short them myself. So let's get that done. switch installed and now we can just use these buttons to actuate our dot so hopefully this new design with a smaller magnet uh, will work all right so it seems like this new dot design is working and uh, looks like we can proceed with populating the rest of this array with the electromagnets as well as the flip dots so let's get to it. For the new design, I'm using this M3 threaded rod. Each one measures about 50 millimeters. When assembling a full electromagnet, I also use two washers on either end of the spool and a nut on the end just to keep everything tight. From the top of the electromagnet, to the top of the M3 threaded rod is 19 millimeters. Another step that I take is the electromagnet is insulated further than just the enamel coating the magnet wire with some e-tape. This might not be necessary, but it makes me feel better and adds a little bit of extra cushioning between the enamel wire and the threaded rod itself. So other than the threaded rod, I'm going to need washers and some M3 nuts. Now it's time to grab the drill and start assembling.
Using a drill to make an electromagnet works pretty well. But as you saw, the winding starts out pretty smooth. But eventually, either from my user error or just the nature of using the drill, uh, it eventually becomes uneven. Once I finalize the design, I think I'm going to look into designing and building a automatic winding machine to make the process a little faster and hopefully make the magnets a little bit more even. But for now, during this development process, using the drill works just as well. Let's grab the drill again and uh, get these screwed into our array. With the electromagnets installed, I also put magnets into three more flip dots and populated the rest of the array. Now time to test whether or not this new design really eliminates the crosstalk between two adjacent dots. So it looks like this new design is going in the right direction. Now when this dot flips, it doesn't cause any of the adjacent dots to flip. Next time I'm going to be looking at ways to control all four dots at once. My first thought is to daisy chain them together using the row and column in order to select which flip dot I want to flip. I hope you liked that video and enjoy seeing the progress I'm making on working my way up to a full wall mounted flip dot display. There's certainly more engineering to do. Be sure to check the link in the description to check my GitHub uh, to see all the design files. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying my content. And I'll see you next time.